Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this time of prayer and worship from St. John's Episcopal Church in Johnson City. I'm always so glad to see all of you um, wherever you are joining us from. I want to uh, begin this morning with a few announcements, um, maybe slightly more extensive than usual. usual. Um, I do want to say that Nick uh, Andrews, our, um, our uh, organist and uh, parish administrator will be out of the office this week and out next Sunday. And so I thank um, all the folks who are volunteering in the office this week in his absence, uh, Francis Jackson and Ann Kaler, uh, David Kalwinski and Jean Archer. And give thanks also for uh, some folks who have been working on uh, repairing uh, the floors in the Great Hall, Bill Archer and Bob Cooper and Renaud Dubberley. Uh, so lots of good work going on in the building uh, while we are still uh, absent from it. Uh, most of you, I think, will have read the letter that came out uh, via email this week from your vestry and from the COVID-19 task force um, outlining our uh, worship schedule for the month of May and announcing that our first uh, service of worship inside the nave will be on May 23rd, which is the Feast of Pentecost, uh, sort of the grand finale of the Easter season and sometimes known as the birthday of the church. Um, before the 23rd is the 16th, and that is the day of another uh, great uh, worship service, uh, the bishop's visitation and uh, confirmation of 12 confirmants who have been waiting in the wings for their confirmation uh, for um, more than a year now. Um, so that will be a wonderful day. On the 16th, we will have a... Um, a Zoom service in the morning, and then the bishop is coming to Johnson City and will be with us in the park at 6 p.m. So uh, confirmants and their families get first dibs, but there are, will still be spaces for you to make reservations if you would like to be there in the park uh, to celebrate with our confirmants and see the bishop. This uh, service will also be live streamed. So um, I encourage you, um, whether you are there in the park or joining us live stream to participate in this uh, great uh, worship service and see the Bishop and celebrate with our confirmation. On May the 23rd, as I said, will be our first service in the nave and uh, reservations will be required. So I encourage you to do that. And beginning on that day, all our services from the nave uh, will be live streamed. We have new cameras uh, with greater capability than uh, my computer and Zoom. So uh, the camera can pan the whole nave and the congregation and zoom in on the altar and on our musicians. And um, It'll be a, a more, um, I think, even dynamic live streaming than what you're used to on Zoom. Beginning on that day, uh, we will not have a Zoom service of the word, but we will uh, still have Zoom coffee hour every week after the service because I know and you know how uh, important it has become to see each other's faces and to greet one another. And so I encourage you, even if you are not here in the nave, uh, but watch uh, via live stream, that you join us for um, Zoom coffee hour. And just to say that this schedule that came out in that letter is not a permanent schedule. It's our next phase. Uh, of opening up and we'll continue to evaluate and at some point add other services in the nave and add things like nursery and fellowship 
and other offerings. Uh, but this is uh, sort of a snapshot for the month of May and the immediate future. And now I invite you to uh, take a moment to gather yourselves in body and spirit for prayer together on this morning.
risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up, and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He said, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, 
how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Adspas, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first book of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 
whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, amen. About a year or so ago, my husband and I watched a dramatic mini series called Manhunt. Some of you all may have seen it as well, about the search for the Unabomber. You may remember that Unabomber was the name given to the man whose identity was unknown for 17 years, who sent homemade bombs through the mail that exploded when the recipients opened the letter or package. He sent 16 of these packages before he was caught and his name was Ted Kaczynski. But the series is really about the FBI agent, Jim Fitzgerald, who helped track him down. The Unabomber left none of the ordinary clues, no fingerprints, no DNA, and made everything in his cabin, including the epoxy glue for his contraptions, so that nothing could be traced back to him. But at some point he began sending letters to the media that accompanied the bombs that he sent including a 35,000 word manifesto that he sent to the New York Times and the Washington Post demanding that it be published. Jim Fitzgerald is a forensic linguist, a pioneer in analyzing written documents, the language, the grammar, the sentence structure, the word choice to determine the identity of a writer. Analyzing the Unabomber's manifesto and other letters, Jim Fitzgerald assembled a profile of the Unabomber, found clues there in the written documents. And some months after that profile was publicized, Ted Kaczynski's brother came forward and said, I think my brother is the Unabomber. And he led them to the location of Ted Kaczynski's cabin in Lincoln, Montana. The written documents had left a trace of the person who had written them. 
That was all the evidence that the investigators had, but it turned out to be enough to find him. There are other kinds of evidence too. And I think of the many beautiful snowfalls that we had when I was in Vermont for a couple of years serving at the cathedral there in Burlington. Waking up after a fresh snowfall overnight, we would see animal tracks in the, across our deck and out in the yard. Evidence of the animals who had visited during the night. Rabbit tracks, raccoon tracks, coyote tracks, and other creatures. We did not see the animals but we saw the tracks that they had left behind. We saw the evidence of their visitation, evidence that they had come and would come again. And there are other kinds of evidence too, evidence of God. No one has seen God, says John in his letter to us in his epistle. No one has seen God, but we have evidence of God. God is love. The evidence of God is love. That is who God is, how God acts, how God works, how God visits, how God lives and breathes, how God reveals God's self, how we see God in our lives, in our midst, alive and at large in the world. Evidence of God. God is love and love is evidence of God. The fingerprints and footprints of God. And the word that John uses for love in his letter is a very special word, agape, which means a love that is all giving, all active giving, all verb, all love, reaching out, reaching in, that expects nothing in return. God is agape. And in his letter, John addresses us and all the other readers as beloved. Agape toi. We are beloved. God is agape. And we also ought to agape one another. Beloved, no one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, evidence of God. The famous neurologist Oliver Sacks, in one of his books, tells the story of a patient he calls Mrs. O.C. Mrs. O.C. was somewhat deaf but otherwise in quite good health. She was 88 years old and lived in a nursing home for the elderly. And one night she dreamt vividly of her childhood in Ireland and especially of the songs they had danced to and sang. But when she woke up, the music was still going on in her head, loud and clear. It was the middle of the night. Someone, she thought, must have left on a radio, left a radio playing. But why was she the only one disturbed by it? She checked every radio and all of them were turned off. And then she thought, how odd, a radio station that only played the Irish music the only songs that she knew and loved. 
And so eventually, as this music played on and on, she went to her ENT and he told her, no, it's nothing wrong with your ears, Mrs. O.C. That would usually be a buzzing or a ringing, not beautiful music. She was referred to a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with your mind, Mrs. O.C., he said. And indeed, she was alert and rational and chipper. And so she was finally referred to the neurologist, Dr. Sachs, who discovered that she had had a small stroke and was still having seizures in that portion of her brain. And the seizures were activating very deep memories from her early childhood in Ireland and bringing them vividly to life. One day, Mrs. O.C. was sitting in Dr. Sachs's office and she said to him, I know you are there, Dr. Sachs, and I know I'm an old woman living in a nursing home, but I feel like I'm a child again in Ireland. I feel my mother's arms around me. I see her and hear her voice singing to me. And though activated by a stroke, these memories deeply buried for a long time were a particular blessing to Mrs. O.C. Because her father had died before she was born and her mother had died before she turned five. And orphaned and alone, she was sent from Ireland to New York City to live with a stern and rather forbidding aunt. And as an adult, she had had no conscious memory of her childhood in Ireland or of her mother or of her home. And she had always felt this as a keen sadness the loss of the knowledge of the beginnings of her life. And now she had been given this missing part, the evidence, the truth that she had been held and loved. Beloved. Beloved. And it is as if John, in his letter, wants to evoke such a deep memory, perhaps a forgotten truth that is at the core and beginning of our lives. Beloved. Beloved, no one has seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us. And this is the love, he says, that casts out fear. So we can love fearlessly. We've all been intimate with fear this year and still are in many ways. As the pandemic wanes in some places and rages on in others around the world. We have fear of the destructive power of the pandemic, afraid of an unknown and uncertain future. What will survive? what may never be the same. Our lives are fragile. Our communities are fragile. Our world often feels fragile. And so we are afraid. And some of us I know have been afraid for St. John's. Will the church and community I love 
really survive? Will it be the same? Will everyone come back? Who will be missing? And your vestry has had to lead and make decisions in the midst of their own fears and the fears of others. But in a crisis, if we look into each other's eyes, we will see our own fears also in the eyes of each other. And this can draw forth a great tenderness for ourselves and each other. And in that case, all options close except this one, to receive the love we've been given and be the love in flesh and blood that we have been given. Love casts out fear, says John in his letter to us. Do not be afraid, says the angel at the empty tomb and everywhere in scriptures. And Parker Palmer has written eloquently of his own battles with fear throughout his life. As one who is no stranger to fear, I've had to read these words and hear these words from the gospel with care, so as not to twist them into discouraging counsel of perfection. Do not be afraid does not mean we cannot have fear. Everyone has fear. Instead, the words say, we do not have to be the fear that we have. We do not have to live or act from the place of fear, thereby making a world in which fear is multiplied. We do not have to be the fear that we have. We have places of fear inside of us, but we have other places as well. Places with name like trust and hope and faith and love. And we can choose to live and act from one of these places and stand in one of these places. And that is ground that will support us. Beloved, beloved, there is nothing else we need to know. Since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love, God lives in us. Evidence of God. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Brian, our bishop, Laura, our rector, and Kathy, our deacon, and for all the people and ministries of St. John's, for on our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Grace Episcopal in Chattanooga and St. John the Evangelist Episcopal, Eagle Butte, South Dakota. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer that he may provide for those who lack food, work, and shelter. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may also reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, the sick, and the dying. We especially remember those on our parish prayer list. Kitty, Amanda, Sue, Ron, Veronica, Alice, Linda, Steve, David, Gary, Tim, Mary Catherine, Evelyn, Ed and Charlene, Carolyn, Becky, Peg, Jennifer, Bob, Ebele, Bill, Karen, Judith, Judy, Michael, Ted, Chance, Sue, Melanie, Gavin, John, George, Mary Sue, Mark, and Tiaswana. We pray also for Hawk and his family, for Rebecca, Dylan, Gregory, and the soul of Jimmy for David and Tracy, for Olivia, and Abby. We pray for the repose of the soul of Frank Driscoll. And we remember all those who have died, especially Mary Sue McCall, mother of Tanya Wilkes. We pray also for our confirmands as they prepare for their confirmation. For Garland, Peter, Sam, Kate, Nancy Jane, Deborah, Rex, Andrew, Owen, Bradley, John, and Susan.
We pray also for those who celebrate birthdays this week. Eleanor Pettyjohn, Jennifer Green, John Nagy, Eleanor Byrne, Wilkes Harper, Lee Bidgood, Cassandra Pusateri. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give thanks also for the ministry of Lynn McCoy, who has been our journal editor for seven and a half years. And the uh, occasion of her retirement from that service and that ministry. I invite your other prayers of thanksgiving at this time. Pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That according to God's promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us for life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord, alleluia. The peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Peace be with you.
our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Together, we now give thanks. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. God the Father, who redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve Amen.
the hour follows uh, on a separate link for those of you who are able to join in that time of fellowship. And some of us are on our 